They all coming, man. Is everybody, is everybody, is everybody in? It's all cool. Can y'all hear me? Yeah, I know I got to check my audio. Can y'all hear me? I got to make sure y'all can hear me first. Make sure y'all got y'all woods and all that, man. Yeah, make sure, you know. Can y'all hear me, though? Ain't nobody say, yeah, I can hear you, fuck it. All right, all right, okay. I'm seeing it now. Yeah, man, but you know, today, I wanted to give a nigga his flowers that I feel like don't get enough of his flowers. You know, this this one of the things, reasons why I started doing this. It's like, I, I want to use these as opportunities to give certain people a lot, or a lot of people their flowers that probably don't get them as much as they need to or get the recognition that they need to as far as what they meant to the movement. So me being one of the guys that was right there, 10 toes in the, in the mix, I always want to try to speak on the people that I could vouch for who really like deserve flowers. And today I'm gonna be doing that with blood. I'm gonna be doing that with blood today. Blood money, big glow, real legend. You feel me? Really, really one of those. Really should be respected, man. Honorable, honorable. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, man. We in, a, we in, a, we going straight in with the uh, with the big glow story today, man. Um, I know I like to keep notes, um, so I don't be forgetting too much. You feel me? But you know, um, um. Big Glow, when I was growing up, Big Glow was so fucking scary to me, fool. Like, not even on no woo. Like, you feel me? It was just like, bro looked crazy as hell. I'm not going to lie to y'all, bro. Like, certain niggas who you just know, like, they be, like, look. Like, when niggas be looking crazy, like, you be having to assume a nigga crazy until he show you he not. You know what I'm saying? Like, when you, when you, when you see one of the guys and... Folk got tattoos all over his face. He got nappy beard hair. Folk got the little, like, skin that was just, like, rusty and shit. Like, he just looked like a real, he looked like a real, like, like, savage on Steve growing up. Folk looked like a real savage, folks. So it used to be like, I just, like, never, like, he was one of the niggas when I was coming up. I just never wanted to, like, play with on phone him. Like, you could see, like, and it wasn't just no, um... Like no um facade either. Like he ain't just looked the part. Like his his name came with like meaning and and like like some type of toughness. It wasn't just cap or it wasn't just like some. He was just doing some ego or like some alter ego he was creating on his own. He was really that. Like he earned his name, and his stripes. You know what I'm saying so. He was just scary as hell looking though when I was coming up, and it was like because of that, it was like. I never got on folks' bad side. I always fucked with him. He was cool as hell. I think the day we had shot, we on that that shit was um Sosa and um Fredo. You feel me? Like um when we had shot that, it was like uh all the guys out, and I think Big Glow was fresh out. And one of the first memories I got with him for was him like being all in front of the camera, like just mugging, like. Oh, I'm looking at four white. Four, what's wrong with four white in the camera? Can I... <laughs> for y'all don't understand. For like, like, like niggas be niggas be niggas be in them videos tweaking for like, like for niggas be in them videos. You don't be like man. Some videos too. For you, you see a lot of you see a lot of strange strange shit going on. I ain't gonna lie, like. You feel me? So me as a shorty, you know, we had shot on that probably got shot at what, 2011 or something like that? Like, I was probably 14, th 13, finna be 14 or something like that. And I'm just growing up. I'm everything that I'm around is happening to me for the first time. Like, you know, it's just like somebody told me about my son. I'm like, man, he bad as hell. One of my uncles like, no, he's not bad. He's just curious. You gotta think like 
He a young nigga. Like, a lot of the shit he doing, he doing it for the first time ever. Like, you got to let him tweak off the seat for a minute. And it's just like, wrong up there. Like, you know what? Kind of right about that. Like, he just like, at this point, J-World, I appreciate the donations and the concerns, bro. I appreciate everything. It's all love. I'm good. Um, But, yeah, like, with blood, it was the same way. Like, um, bro, <laughs> it's like, fool, that shit, when I was a shorty coming up, when I was 13 and shit, a lot of the shit I was seeing, I was seeing it for the first time. So it was like, damn, like... <laughs> Like, I'm seeing all this happen for the first time, but I'm just seeing blood, like, real loud. Like, fool, I'm watching him. Like, yeah, this nigga crazy, fool. I know I can't fuck with fool. I can't play with him. You feel me? Like, that's how he was giving, fool. He all in the camp. <laughs> Why is he doing that, bro? Why is he on that, fool? Off that. These all the guys, gang. We ain't, we ain't, you ain't got to do that, fool. We ain't got to hurt nobody or do nothing, fool. Like, Please get off that, folk. You feel me? So it was like, that was the first little memory I had of folk. Like, yeah, just just don't never play with folk. Like, he looks scary, and he probably mean business, folk. Just, you feel me? Move accordingly when it's with blood. You feel what I'm saying? So, you know, like, that was like, his name really real Mario. Like, you know, if you're from the block, like, you feel me? You you know, he, he got a couple names. But, like, man, all that, when I was coming up, all that, all that, Whoa, what's wrong with folk? He high? He, man, some got him fried on gang. Like, you feel me? So it was one of those things. Like, that was one of my first memories. Just like, in my own head, knowing, like, don't ever play with folk. Like, you feel me? And he had ties. You know, people, like, don't know. Like, Big Glow wasn't even BD. He was GD, actually. Like, but nobody, like, we had a real lot of them at the time, like, no GD tolerance, like, I ain't gonna lie, but he was a real lad, like, niggas weren't gonna play with blood, you know what I'm saying, like, niggas, niggas knew not to disrespect or, like, dishonor, none he got, he, he ride or, or, or rep or nothing, they nothing, like, you feel me, all that shit go out the window when, when, when blood was around, you know what I'm saying, it ain't even because niggas was scared, it just, niggas got too much respect, you know what I'm saying? Like, too much respect for Bud to even play like that. And you know, like, you know what I'm saying? Because he don't even get, care about GD. But if he feel like you're trying to disrespect him or play with GD because he right there, he'll get on your top. You know what I'm saying? So it was like, he was actually real for that. He wasn't apologetic about it. He never tried to hide it. And he never flipped. The whole time he was locked in, all this full them blowing up, bitty out, he never flipped. He never flipped. I ain't gonna lie. So it was like, with Bud, it's like, that was another thing that I just respected at the time. Like, oh, okay. It's like, you got to like him or just, like, either way, he don't give a fuck. You feel me? Like, you either going to like the fact that he's GD or you, you ain't, but you ain't going to do nothing about it. You feel me? Like, you ain't going to do nothing about that. So that's how he was. You know what I'm saying? Like, he was unapologetically GD. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, so, um, you know, like, before the fame... With Big Glow, man, like, Shorty was a nuthead, for Like, I remember, for one day, I'm walking in the hood, walking through the hood, and I ended up in the back of D Rose building. If you're from my block, you know D Rose stayed in the cream building his whole life. Blood in the back of the cream building in the parking lot, man, with a BB gun. He's shooting water bottles off the fence, trying to. Get his accuracy right. And I walked up and I'm like, he ain't pew, pew, pew. He like he back there fucking something up. So I walk up and I'm like, man, what you doing? I thought he was shooting at squirrels or something. Like I thought he was just back there tweaking. He didn't got his son, BB gun or something. Like I'm thinking he tweaking. Folks back there really working on his accuracy. Like grown man shit. Like ain't no play play. He ain't at the he ain't at the gun range or nothing. He in the hood in the back of the motherfucking block. Shooting at border bottles, gang. I ain't gonna lie. Like, he really, like, out here on some assassin, assassinator type shit. Like, you feel me? Like, folks, real loud. Like, back there on some John Wick type shit. I'm, damn, what the fuck is you on, folks? Like, you were back here real loud. Got 18 bottles filled with water. You trying to knock them bitches off the gate. Like, what the fuck do you do this shit once a week or something? Like, why you. <laughs> okay. 
That shit was crazy, like fool, like what the fuck, like what is y'all doing, fool? I ain't gonna lie, like you, you, you back there slow as hell or something. I don't know, fool, like, and the shit, but but it was like it was crazy, cause, like I told y'all, me going up, in the hood when I was young around blood folk. At first, when we first met, a lot of shit that I was seeing, I was seeing for the first time, cause I was young, so it was just overly shocking me, folk, like. This when I'm young, it's like, damn, bro, like, you really out here, like, this how y'all move, you know what I'm saying, like, should I be, hey, should I be shooting at these motherfucking water bottles with you, folks? like, should I be over here aiming at them bitches, trying to knock them bitches off the gate with you, folks? like, I ain't gonna lie, like, put me up on game, <laughs> this how we got locked in, because I ain't gonna lie, bro, I was a student, like, I ain't gonna lie, teach me that shit, if I like it, teach me that, you know what I'm saying, like, whatever I like, you know, I like Pistols, for I ain't gonna lie. Anything to do with a pipe. I didn't want to sell drugs or nothing. Like, on okay, gang, yeah, Tarantino was around. Tarantino was like my right hand man back in the day, fo. Like, and I seen, when I went to LA, I seen folks. We was at the Herald Chicken. I ran into him out there. Baby, that's still my nigga, fo. We just, you know, fo. He, he got that. He got his, caught his way. Went out there in Cali. Feel me? We was so them, but yeah, all the phone numbers around. Tarantino, a real front streeter. You know what I'm saying? Like, really official. So, um, yeah, folks, you feel me? Like, um, I was a student, so I've always wanted to know, like, all right, if that's how we move, I want to do that too, you know? Like, I want to, I want to, I want to, I want to shoot at that. You know what I'm saying? So you let me shoot at it. I'm over there, really trying to, like, <laughs> I'm trying to line something up, man. I ain't gonna lie to you. I'm trying to, I'm, 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 I'm trying to really line something up, folks, like. He, I'm trying to really, you feel me? Like, I'm trying to be like him low key, because that's what he back here doing for real. Like, he mean that he ain't back here playing. This is something he really plan to use, like, with real pipes. Like, accuracy is a thing to him. You know what I'm saying? So, that was my first little memory, one of the first memories I had in the hood. And this is probably like 2010, 2011 type shit. You feel me? Like, so, like, now, you know, Funnum get to sign and they deals. You know, we still all on the block in Indiana. Funnum, I mean, on, on Indiana, on Gresham. Folks and them signing they deals. He don't have a deal at this point. You feel me? Folks and them, this, 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 so and them, this, him, this, them doing that. You know what I'm saying? And folks, you know, like, he realized set back and let everybody else be front line. He played the back role for and he knew when to, when to do, when to come out and try to, do what he needed to do, fuck. He set back. He Capo, Tato, S D, all four them, all four them was doing their thing and blood was just sitting back. He wasn't even dropping for real. He was he was sitting back. But like when like low key blood was low key the best uh glow artist, I ain't gonna lie. Like outside of Sosa, Blood Money was real live, probably the rawest glow game rapper for I ain't gonna lie. Like, if y'all not fans of his music or, like, y'all, like, what y'all liked about him was, like, short-lived, y'all probably need to go look at his discography. Like, go search him up. Go really get an open ear for his music. Like, and really see how he was coming for. Like, Blood Money was really one of them dudes, like, he really was talented, for Like, he really was talented. Like, I used to listen to folks say, like, oh, yeah, this ain't. This ain't this song different, folks. This ain't this ain't nothing that a nigga gonna be able to imitate. He had his own style and everything. He wasn't trying to sound like so so or nothing. He was like giving it to him how how he was giving it to us in the hood. Like you know what I'm saying? Like I ain't gonna lie, you feel me? He was doing his thing and it was like the niggas that was with him because you know blood money, bro. He wanted to, uh, another reason he's so respected is because he was like a big homie. He was a big homie. He was like big bro. He was big bro. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, he'll get out here with you. He'll stand on that corner with you. He'll get out here in that trench with you. But he he made money. He was about a dollar. You know what I'm saying? He wasn't trying to. He knew what the fuck the circumstances and the situation was in our hood. So he was always ready to clap a nigga. But shorty liked to sell drugs and get money. He was selling drugs even when he caught his deal. But he was smart enough. He was an older nigga. So he just was ahead of us. He was ahead of the shorties. And he knew that we all needed money on phone and we needed paper to do to, to to participate in any beef. So the whole time we was warring and all that, he was he was he was uh he was he was uh he was front line with us, but he was making money. 
And, you know, me and him, we was neighbors. Feel me? Like, when Fulham caught their deals, I moved on Indiana. I moved on Gresham. Moved on Front Street. You feel me? From from my hood. I was living in my hood. I moved on Front Street. And me and him was neighbors. I stayed in the back of the courtway. He stayed in the front. The first, as soon as you walk in, first door to the left, I'm all the way in the back. Last door. You know what I'm saying? Last door to the to the uh back. Right. You feel me? So that's like that's like, all right, okay. Now this shit, uh he sitting back, he waiting on his he waiting. He he letting phone them do their thing. He letting he letting like all the phone them just come how they coming and he waiting his turn. I ain't gonna lie, like he waiting his turn. Niggas ain't even know he was finna pop out. He was. For Captain was doing their thing. SD was doing their thing. Fredo was doing their thing. All that was going on, for like. And folks just sat back. And he was telling me, for like, he'll come grab me. He'll be riding through the hood. He'll see me out there. He'll come grab me. And we'll park in the back of the white building, 6253. And he'll be back there, like, telling me, like, his plan. This is when I realized folks were smart. I ain't gonna lie. I never thought he was dumb, but it's like, 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 um, it was just like, I never knew how much of a smart guy he was, you know what I'm saying? Because a lot of times you can't look past what you see, you know what I'm saying? Like, you, you, you be seeing a nigga face testing, not to say that I misjudge, bro, but it's like, when you look like you look for niggas to misjudge you, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, until you really sit and talk to niggas, man, you would never know what type of time and niggas really be on, man. And shorty, he came to get me a lot, and he'll be talking, he'll be letting me hear his unreleased music, and he'll just be talking to me about, like, what, how we need to move, and what he on, and how he never, when, he, when it's his turn, he never gonna turn his back on us, bro, and it was like, blood money, I believed him, like, I ain't gonna lie, because he was really out there with us, like, him, and Fredo, big brother, Drayski, folk, big Drayski, Two of the realest niggas you will ever run into, man. I ain't gonna lie, because they'll get out here with they little niggas. They'll get out here for the cause, but they'll never send you off. They'll never, never tell you to do nothing that they wouldn't do. They'll never guide you in the wrong direction. They hear they got they got their ears and eyes open. They, they, they very knowledgeable and respected in our hood. You know what I'm saying? Like... So when you know you a nigga like that, it's like everything that a nigga say, you kind of gravitate toward, towards it in a real situation because you know this guy. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know how he feel. You know how he rotate and what he be on for real. Like, you know he a real live trench nigga. He don't got no problem getting out here with you and going through these emotions that we battling together. He don't have a problem with it. So everything that he said, folk, i listen. Every time that he tried to tell me something or ring my bell, folk, even when he used to tell me, I had Gresham hot. Me and, when, when I moved on Gresham, folk, I had it hot. I ain't gonna lie. I was on the block. Me and folks and them on the block. We in the crib doing our shit. We outside the crib doing our shit. We gang banging. Got everybody pulling up. It's a lot of traffic. I'm throwing parties. There's just a lot going on. I ain't gonna lie. And folks, like I said, he always... He always wanted to get some money. So that was his first priority. Like, he he with the beef, but if it's costing him money, he going to feel away. You know what I'm saying? And he was one of them niggas he was trapping for. So if he couldn't get money, regardless of what, if we was winning or not, nigga, he just, it was hurting his pockets. You know what I'm saying? And that wasn't what he was on. He, he ain't rock with that. I ain't going to lie. So, you feel me? Even when he used to tell me, like, look, bro, y'all need to fall back. I'm trying to get some paper for, like, I used to have to really respect that. I ain't gonna lie, like, a lot of niggas, they'll say something to you, and it's like, nigga, we out here in tour, nigga, you can't tell us how to beat niggas. You know what time it is. Stop talking, stop playing. But it's like, when a nigga like blood speak, folk, you know he with the bullshit. So whatever he telling you, folk, you probably need to just listen, folk, because he with it. He ain't acting like he ain't with it. You know he with it. So you can't even act like he not. You can't be like, come on, folk, you ducking your shit. Couldn't do that with blood, because he in it too hard, folk. He with us for sure. I ain't gonna lie, like, we can't even take, we couldn't take it from him. So when he was to be telling me we moving sloppy and we, we cutting in and we stepping on his toes with his bread, we, I real lie, you gotta tell, like, the guy that like, we gonna be cool, like, we ain't gonna, we gonna do, we, it's regular schedule program, but when we on Gresham, folk, 
we got to move a certain way because folks in the mouth are trying to get to it and you really can't blame a nigga. You know what I'm saying? Like, you feel me? You really can't blame, bro. So, like, when they were signing their deals, he was sitting back, waiting his turn, getting his music together. You know what I'm saying? Waiting for his turn to pop. And when it was his time, folks popped this shit. No cap. You know what I'm saying? Like, and, like, when he got his deal, I don't know if y'all all watched the E-Day interview. I mean, the story time. But I spoke on, like, how Sosa deal made everybody feel like that's what niggas was supposed to get. You know what I'm saying? Like, that made niggas feel like they was everybody thought they could get at least three, four million. Like everybody thought they was supposed to sign a deal for multi million dollars. Like they thought that shit was just laying around. You know what I'm saying? They thought Sosa changed the game. He opened up the floodgates. Everybody finna get five million. That's not how this shit worked, bro. It still ain't how it worked. I ain't gonna lie, Sosa still got the biggest deal out of all the guys right now. Like that deal, that six M's, ain't nobody signed for that yet. Still to this day, nobody ain't saying for that. Not from my way. Niggas probably accumulated six million and made it and got six million, but it's like you made that like Nick they, they they that was what was that was a social deal when he signed it. You know what I'm saying? Like so like when it came to blood folk, when he got his deal, niggas thought like he was supposed to sign for M's and all that, but folk niggas blood really finessed the system. That's how blood felt. Bro, blood said and told me about these signings deal. Nigga was talking like he like, bro, look, I'm on the block with you every day. I'm around here selling drugs, gang banging, and I just got paid a couple hundred thousand to do the same shit I've been doing, folks. He like, for I'm really finessing this shit. For I'm a real street nigga. I'm just rapping and getting, getting and, and finessing this shit for what it is. Everything ain't about a home run hit, nigga. Shit, I'm trying to feed my people right now. He like, if you a smart nigga, you gonna use the money you get to get yourself in a bigger position. And I'm just sitting there like, yeah. And he like, man, who do wanna keep sitting around big look look cuz them and they got all they sacked. And even though I'm trapping, it's like when certain things happen, I can't put up five, six bucks. And help folding them with 10000 when they need me. I can't do that, folk. I'm making my money, folk, but I ain't, I can't, I can't, I can't do that. And I'm just like, yeah, you right, folk, you right. You feel me? He basically was on some shit. Like, he wanted to have his own, folk. Like, however that came, he wanted to have his own. He didn't want to have a deal with Sosa. He didn't want to do none of that, bro. Folk, real lie, like, like. He didn't, he didn't, he didn't, he, he wanted to have his own stake in this. Like, he wanted to have his own name and own like type of like hustle and and, and, and and like background that's what he wanted from gang he had it you feel me he was taking rap very serious you know what i'm saying but he also understood that this shit was like free for him because he on the block he 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 basically finessing the system bro all he doing is using this shit for what it's worth to better his situation and his family he's still in the hood still selling drugs still pulling up on in the white infinity on forges Doing this thing, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, he's still doing his thing. As soon as he signed, he grabbed fat-ass watch, big-ass cube, and, like, he real loud showed his ass for him. Bro, and was walking around with hood trophies. Like, nigga, I did this. I'm phoning him, like, nigga, this, 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 this from a street nigga, fo. Like, I'm around here turning. I got sacks. I'm a real street nigga, fo. I ain't, I ain't no rapper. And I'm like, yeah, fo, you... You definitely did that. I ain't gonna lie. You definitely did that. But it was inspiring. I ain't gonna lie because blood another nigga, man. It's watching him come up. It's like when you see niggas like him get that type of shit going on. It, it if you if you a certain type of nigga is gonna inspire you. You know what I'm saying? Like if you if you if you like seeing that type of story happen for it, it's gonna inspire you because he one of them niggas where you say. If he can do it, I know I can do it. Like, he one of those type of niggas. He came from bad situations and circumstances. But, like, if he could come from under that and and and, and get a deal and get and get a sack and, and live his life, folk, after all he did through and survived and be as he did and all that, there's no reason no nigga out here could get it. That's how I took it. Like, I ain't gonna lie. He, he was one of those guys. Like, you seen him do what he do, there's no way you shouldn't get inspired. No cap. Like, so, 
Like, uh, he really was living out his dreams. Like, I ain't gonna lie, like, he was living out his dreams. Like, Blood was one of them dudes. Like, he real live. I used to be, like, amazed at how he used to real live still, like, be around. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I see he went out his way to still, like, make sure he never vanished, for Like, he made sure, like, it was a couple of the guys from Glow Gang that used to stay in the city still, like, in the hood still, like, and it's crazy because that might have been to their detriment, you know what I'm saying? Because all the ones that really used to come back from Glow Gang is the ones that's dead. You know what I'm saying? Like Trey Savage, Capo, Blood, Money, you know what I'm saying? Like, so I really can't even say, like, that was, like, something that was smart, you know what I'm saying? It actually probably wasn't smart how he was moving, you know what I'm saying? Or how folks know was thinking. Because it ended up coming them their demise in a way. But at the time, it was like, from a hook from a nigga who grew up and and is, is like look up to these niggas you like man bro these niggas real he could be somewhere in another state like in hollywood he's still out here with us trying to make sure we good and we straight he still got the crib in the courtway so he can come and do his thing and 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 watch the guys and still be in the hood like you know what i'm saying like that was that was inspiring for a young nigga like me Oh yeah, man. Make sure y'all like, comment, and subscribe and all that, man. And, but yeah, it was like I really idolized Blood. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I like I idolized him. He was a real nigga in my hood. <coughs> he a guy who should be respected and mentioned among the greats. <coughs> when you bring up who was the hardest rappers that ain't here no more, make sure you mention Blood. Big Glow. However you want to address him and call him. That's what he is. That's what he is. You know what I'm saying? So, like, um, then, you know, when he got killed, when he got killed, right, I remember waking up. I remember waking up, right, and I had, like, checked my phone. Like, I was asleep, bro. I had woke up, like, I guess that it had happened already. You feel me? And I had woke up to, like, checking my phone and checking the net and, like, seeing what was going on. And, like, I remember reading the report and all that, for Like, seeing the hood hurt, reading the report. Like, how many times folks got hit up and all that shit. And I'm just like, damn. Boy, I was so... I was so hurt, bro. I ain't even gonna lie because some niggas, bro, you think they gonna be around forever, and you put and you and they do so much real shit when you around, and you think like they got the streets figured out, like you just think certain niggas gonna be here forever, like you think, like niggas like 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 I said, him, Big Drake, you just think them type of niggas gonna live forever, bro. Like you know what I'm saying? Like you just think it like, all right, y'all got this shit figured out. That's why y'all still here. Y'all obviously the smartest niggas in our area. You know what I'm saying? Like, y'all gotta be. You know what I'm saying? Like, for real, bro. Like, so, when I, you know, seen what I seen, it just like was, damn, it just, you know, was a wake up call because, you know, like, you, it, it just was a, it, it was a, it was a, it was a situation where it was like, you know, nobody, nobody is above this. Nobody is above what the the end result of this shit you you never too you never too smart to get caught you never too like you're never above it you're never you can never beat the streets you know what i'm saying you can survive it but beating it is a different animal you know what i'm saying so like with that when i woke up to the news it was like you know it hurt i ain't gonna lie i was like damn made me realize that you know i idolize people who can be killed you know what i'm saying like Y'all, I idolize people who, like, they not above it, you know what I'm saying? Like, they, it'll happen to anybody, you know what I'm saying? Like, and that was one of those things, bro. And it also made me realize that, like, when you get a chance to change your life, bro, change it, you know what I'm saying? Don't, don't, don't dwell. Don't make it hard, harder than it got to be. Don't do none of that. Just, just let it happen. Just change your life, bro. Change your situation and circumstances, man. Like, 
when you when you get a chance to move around or to better your life or to upgrade your status, never hesitate to do it. You know what I'm saying? And this is one of the things that I salute Polo for doing, bro. Like, as soon as Polo got his deal, he moved to Cali. He didn't sit around and wait. He didn't try to, like, try living at home first and being around the guys every day while he got a deal. He didn't even try it, fool. Like, he didn't even try it, fool. Folk just was like, man, I'm out. I'm in Cali. Folk them gray, he signed his deal. He, that nigga was in Cali looking for managers like a month later, fool. He was not he was not kidding, bro. And Steve, like, he never even tried to live nowhere. Like, <clears throat> so it's like, like, because even Sosa and them, like, Sosa, Sosa lived up. He tried to live up north at first, and that's where all that Google shit was happening because he was still accessible. Niggas know they could still get to him. They know he live up north. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's how niggas is, folks. You know what I'm saying? So it was like, the, like when y'all get a chance, bro, you get a chance to change your situation or your circumstances, bro, don't dwell. Don't wait. Just go. I don't care how painful you think it's going to be or how hard you think it is. Just leave, bro. Because when you dwell and you stay around and you, and you, and you, and you know, you like, give, give these people a chance to like, Get, catch you out of bounds, man. It'll happen. You know what I'm saying? And everything you worked hard for, that deal folks got, all the things he finessed the game out of and, and like, was able to accumulate off this this music, it, it ain't mean nothing. You know what I'm saying? Like, folks had a deal, folks, and his son, like, grew up, now he in the hood still. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? And that's no shade. That's just, like, folks got that deal. And he, I knew if he was still here, Look, little blood wouldn't even he would have been raised up already. He he would have been raised up around riches. You know what I'm saying? Like he would have been turned. You know what I'm saying? If his pops was still here, focus blood would have had his son right there with him. He looked just like him. You know what I'm saying? Son, if little, little bro would have been growing up. You know what I'm saying? Like straight, he wouldn't even know a lot of hot goofy shit because his his pops was gonna protect him from that because he already went through that form. He was gonna show little bro the good life on for them. So it's like when you get a chance to to change your situation, man, like don't hesitate. You know what I'm saying? If it's hard, if it's not, if it's if you feel like it's something you don't wanna do, just sit and really think, you know what I'm saying, and if and, and make the right decision. You know what I'm saying? Because being here in the in, in Iraq, bro, like like I said, all the ones from Glow Game that stayed, for them gone. They ain't here to tell their story or they successful. It's like, for we had to suffer them losses. You know what I'm saying? We had to lose Trey Savage. We had to lose Blood. We had to lose Cap. You know what I'm saying? These real hood legends niggas I stood in the trench with every day. And them niggas had deals and they got their paper for And it was like, they, they was still trench bound though. And it's like, damn, it, they they was changing their situation, but it's like we love this shit so much, man, we just can't let it go. It be hard, you know what I'm saying? It was hard for Sosa. Niggas had to back those folks like two, three times before folks just said, I'm gone, I'm moving. Like, you know what I'm saying? It be hard to really leave where you from. I don't care how much y'all see on the news about how many killers we have here or how many this and that. Bro, people from Chicago love shit. Chicago unconditionally, like, we'd rather be with Chicago and all this bullshit, because I swear, we we really, like, we really like Chicago niggas, for, or Chicago people, like, we really Chicago, we not even faking, like, we we bleed that, and it be hard for a lot of us to lead this, because we all, a lot of people from Chicago feel like Chicago is the best city in the country, I ain't gonna lie. Like, where do you go when you feel like your city is the best city? When you feel like your city downtown look the best, or your city got the best looking women, or it got the best nightlife, or it got the best food, or it got the best clubs? Like, where do you go when you feel like your city is that? You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't, you don't, you didn't, you know what I'm saying? You think you stay sound or stay independent? Yeah, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna do whatever is best for me and my family. Collab album with Polo. Whew, shit, that's a big ask. Oof, you could put that bid in. Yeah, you feel me? But like, yeah, man, like, y'all don't hesitate, don't, 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 don't linger and don't try to dwell, man. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, 
Big Glow was a legend. And whenever y'all bring up Chicago legends, man, make sure y'all mention him, put him in y'all top five team, whatever. I'm saying he he a legend. He one of them ones who should be respected. Never his name should never be played with a tarnished nigga should never be dissing him or playing with him because he didn't even do that. He another guy who didn't do all that. So yeah, man. Uh, you know I know I ain't cracked too many jokes with the blood money. Uh, with, you know I usually tell these stories and I make a lot of little punchlines and shit like that through the video, but it's like um. That nigga blood was actually a real serious dude, bro. Like it wasn't it like it was it was it was good vibes around, bro. But it wasn't a lot of jokey joke, like funny, make make sure, make a nigga laugh, <laughs> make do a little joke like oh yeah, it's the last one. No, blood was just a, he was really he was serious, bro. Like he was cool, but he was serious. Like he wasn't ha ha he he jokey ha 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 but he he like if he fuck with you though like he like i ain't i ain't trying to make bro sound like he just tough as nails and shit but it's like man bro like you know all that uh he don't be playing like that bro he been slap shit out somebody bro I ain't gonna cap to you man yeah but he a legend though so yeah man you know i just wanted to talk to y'all man and uh Chop it up with y'all. I actually been wanting to do this blood money story because he be re he really be weighing heavy on my heart, and uh, like I just feel like he was one of them people who should should have been here. He should he he should like he like I feel like he should have been alive forever because people need him. Like niggas like him need to be around, and that's just what it is. Um, but yeah, man, that's the blood money story, man. Um. I don't know if it's gonna be the end of this month or the start of New Year, but I'm about to be having people on here. Gonna be having people on here, man. I'm gonna have guests. We're gonna talk about these stories together so they can all so we can all laugh and tweak and all that, man. Um But yeah, man. Check back in, man. I'm back. Like I said, I'll be back. I think I'm gonna drop tomorrow. And I keep saying that at the air video, but I'm I'm really I might drop tomorrow, bro. I ain't gonna lie, I need, I'm gonna drop tomorrow. Because I've been starving, y'all, so I really could just hit y'all with the heat. You know what I'm saying? But, man, I love y'all. I appreciate all my fans, supporters, my mods, man. Tap in, man. Love.